Hello, this Hi. is Princess Library. <laughs> I'm Charlie. And I'm Claudia. And today we are reviewing How Not to Be a Boy by Robert Webb. Yes, we are. Which I finally got around to reading. Yes, we've not spoken about this yet. So I want to know what's your first impression of it. I liked it, but I probably wouldn't recommend it that okay. much. I mean, it's very much my brother's sense of humour. <laughs> that's not a bad thing my brother has a funny sense of humour it's just not my sense of humour it's interesting um, and it's very honest I have to say that yeah um, and it's quite um, self-deprecating in times mm -hmm. I found the humour a bit immature I guess <laughs> it's interesting I talk about the humour because I didn't really see it as a comedy book oh I saw it as a very <laughs> honest very emotional um, autobiography I did not go into it expecting to laugh and then when I did laugh I was like oh yeah this is a funny bit I, I, I really liked it I thought the writing was re really good I thought the content was really good he's definitely had a life that he can write about mm. and there are some really tragic things in it you know oh was, I did cry yeah I cried really I, like quite a lot mm. when um spoiler alert he lost his mother yeah as a um, teenager yeah I bawled like mm -hmm. a baby I think the title sets it up to be more of a manifesto than it actually is. So How Not to Be a Boy obviously reminds us of How to Be a Woman by Catelyn Moran. Mm -hmm. I think that the, the way that the cover is designed is also not entirely unintentional, kind of reminded me mm -hmm. of that anyway. But actually it really is much more of a personal story. It's about Robert Webb's kind of struggles with masculinity throughout his life. He was born into a very typical working class family of that time. What I found really interesting is how he kind of writes that he always considered himself a feminist, always considered himself a champion for women's rights. And then as he goes through life, he, he realizes, realizes. How, how inadequate that is. Yeah. And then I read this uh, with my husband. He read it too. And I think he recognized a lot of those things in himself as yeah. well. It's a, it's a good book. And I think one of the best things about it is that at times you really don't like him. Mm -hmm. Um you really you you feel uncomfortable oh i did anyway um especially when he's writing those letters to his ex-girlfriends um yes i won't go into detail about it but yeah oh my god i wanted to punch him yeah um <laughs> but he definitely realizes his own pretentiousness and his own horrible character traits that he had as a growing up clearly yeah yeah he he's very honest like i said mm -hmm. it's just it's Less of a manifesto and more of a confession. Yeah. Of how he should not have been, you know, or how he was, but that's not the way you should be. Sometimes the funniest moments were the ones where he just describing everyday life. One that uh, that struck me was when he was at university and he went to his first therapy session. I don't know if you remember that part of the book. The therapist said, so uh, how can I help you? And Robert Webb said, oh, nothing. I should have cancelled. I'm fine, really. <laughs> I thought. Yeah. So I think those kind of moments where you can really picture every man doing it. No, yeah, he is very... Um... Not stereotypical, but typical. Yeah, 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 of course. And that's the whole point of the book about how everyone's shaped by their environment, um, both men and women. Because he speaks about mm. his mother as well. and um, His father and stepfather. Mm -hmm, his oh. brothers. Yeah. I, I actually, I found myself quite a lot more interested in his brothers than him. Or really? Points. Yeah. I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> sounds interesting. <laughs> They're just normal blokes. That's kind of... <laughs> I guess I just prefer normal blokes. Ooh, that's a confession. <laughs> no, um, I was so angry by the time he got to Cambridge and then just didn't do any work for three years. And it just drove me mad. You say he didn't do any work, but he clearly laid the foundation for his career. Okay, so he did work in Footlights, but yes. he didn't turn up to class. But what's interesting is he did like so much work to get into Cambridge. So he repeated his A-levels twice. Um, so he's clearly determined when, when it matters, but I think just the, the comedy and the acting took mm -hmm. over, and I'm, I, I can't even remember what he actually went there to study. Oh, it was English literature yeah. or something, right? English literature. Yeah, so a lot of the, the things he talks about are writing. I don't know, it's interesting to me, because I'm a writer, that he had such a different perspective on writing mm. than I did. So for him, it was something that he was doing as a gift to other people. 
Um, and to me, writing is something that I'm doing for myself. And when other people like it, I am amazed. <laughs> um, and so I think there's a very, it's a very different sort of egoism. There. Yeah. Because I'm quite egotistical in my academic stuff. But once it comes to actually doing the creative, the writing, I struggle. So I found that quite an interesting perspective because mm-hmm. I hadn't really thought of it that way before. Yeah. Well, may- maybe you will turn into that sort of perspective. Maybe once you actually sell your writing and people buy it and people enjoy it. Oh, I sold a short story last week. See? What I would have liked to see more of is his family life oh, right yes, at the end. Definitely. It was kind of cut short. Yes. Um, he kept mentioning how his wife was like, you're a disappointment to him after their baby was born. Mm. And then he just didn't talk about that. And I was like, yeah. I want to know what you did wrong. Yeah. He just doesn't talk about his his wife at yeah. all. I think I would have liked to hear more about his family life, how he's raising his daughters and all of that. Although I have to admit I understand because he was so honest about his parents. And by when the book was published, both of his parents were dead. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, yeah. If he starts dragging his wife into it, who is also a public figure, and then yeah. his children, who were still children. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fair. different. Yeah. Um, so I can understand why he didn't. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see them co-write a book or maybe for her to write a book about... Um, yeah. You know, her I would be interested side of the that. story. But I, I really enjoyed it overall. I gave it four stars on Goodreads. Wow. You? Uh, three stars, I think. Okay. I did enjoy it, but again, it wasn't my <laughs> cup of tea. I would recommend it, especially for guys or if you know a guy who is a fan of Robert Webb. Because I think an easy way to, you know, to get someone interested in a story about gender is... is say, hey, it's Robert Webb from Mitch Robert Webb wrote this. Yeah. Absolutely. So I I think maybe that's more of the target market for it as well. But I would definitely recommend it. I'd recommend it to my brother, who loves Mitchell and Webb. Um, So Martin, if you're watching this, read this book. Mm -hmm. But other than that... (laughs) Okay. So that was our review of How Not to Be a Boy by Robert Webb. Thank you for watching. Bye.